So you're interested in getting the Insel 61 x but you want to know if it's really better than the GoPro Fusion. Well, this is the video you gotta see. Because in this video, we're gonna take an ultra in-depth comparison between the Insel 61 x and the GoPro Fusion. You're gonna learn so much about the Insta 61 X that by the end of this video, you're actually gonna know more about the One X than most other reviewers. Because we're gonna look at 40 different factors. It's the most comprehensive comparison ever made between the One X and the GoPro Fusion. This video is broken into several parts. Part one will be video quality. Part two will be usability and features for video. Part three will be photo quality. Part four will be usability and features for photo. Part five will be special uses like drones and underwater. Part six will be workflow and editing. Part seven will be other factors. Now let's get started with the Insta 60 One X versus the GoPro Fusion. Hi, my name is Mick and you're watching 360 Rumors, the resource that 360 shooters trust for in-depth camera reviews and innovative techniques. Let's get started with video quality. So first, let's look at detail. I took some videos at a local park, but it was kind of cloudy. So I took some more videos at the beach while it was sunny. Here's what I found. And if you don't look closely, the One X looks more detailed because it has a higher edge contrast. So it looks sharper when you're not looking closely. But if you look at the actual details, the Fusion has more detail. Take the roof, for example. On the One X, it looks like a smooth surface. On the Fusion, you can see the actual lines of the tiles. From these videos, we can see that the Fusion is more detailed despite having a lower resolution. Now, how is this possible? Well, let's take a look at the other side of the camera. On the One X, the nearest paving looks larger, just as we would expect. On the Fusion, the nearest paving looks compressed. This shows that the larger portion of the sensor is being used for the middle area of the image and a proportionately smaller area is being used for the sides of the image in the Fusion. So as a result, the One X is sharper than the Fusion on the sides. So the winner for detail is the Fusion for the center, while for the sides, the winner is the Insta 61 X. When I'm holding it like this, Guess which part is pointed in front? That's right, the stitch line. So having good image quality at the stitch line is also quite important when I'm using my camera as a third person camera. Next is chromatic aberration. Both the Insta 61 X and the GoPro Fusion have visible chromatic aberration near the edges. So this one's gonna be a tie. Next is flare resistance. This scene is almost the worst case scenario for glare with one lens facing the sun. Now both cameras are doing pretty well without a big drop in contrast. However, the Fusion has less glare than the One X and the One X has this red dot glare kind of like the Ricoh Theta. So the winner for flare resistance is the GoPro Fusion. So far, we've only been looking at optics, but video quality also depends on the processor and the sensor. So let's talk about compression. Now at first glance, the Fusion and the One X look similar. But if you look at the sky, the Fusion sky looks smoother and has less apparent bending. This shows that the Fusion has less compression. So the winner for compression is the GoPro Fusion. Next, let's look at dynamic range. Both have excellent dynamic range. Now, in addition, the One X has a log mode that does increase the highlight range. However, the Fusion's highlight range is still slightly better than the One X. For shadow detail, they're pretty similar. But the One X has one more trick up its sleeve. It's called HDR Video. It's a new mode that will increase dynamic range. But this feature wasn't available yet as of October 2018. So the winner for dynamic range for video is the GoPro Fusion for now. When the One X's HDR video mode is added, this will probably change. Next, let's look at low light performance for video. So I tested both cameras in very low light. Both did pretty well, but the One X has more detail, even when I decreased the exposure of the One X to match the Fusion. In addition, the One X has better control of shutter speed and you can manually set it to as slow as 1 30th speed. So the winner for low light performance for video is the One X. Next, let's look at stitching. 
I tested how well each camera could stitch at various distances from the camera. So the winner for stitching quality is the GoPro Fusion for now. But Insta360 may improve their stitching quality in the future. Next, let's look at auto exposure accuracy. The One X exposure is consistently brighter than the Fusion, often by around one stop. Now, I prefer to preserve highlights, so I prefer the Fusion's more conservative exposure. So the winner for auto exposure is the Fusion because the One X sometimes appears a bit overexposed. Next, let's look at color. To test color, I took videos of a color chart. I adjusted the white balance, the highlights, and the shadows. I made no other adjustments. Then I looked at the vector scope for the color chips. After adjusting white balance and contrast, I found the Fusion and One X to have similar colors. But straight out of the camera without adjustments, the winner for color is Fusion. Next is the audio. The Fusion has excellent spatial audio. It also has a very easy workflow when you want to use spatial audio. Just check the box, plug it into Premiere, and presto, you got spatial audio. Now the One X has great sensitivity, nice but it's too. only in stereo. Neither of them can use external microphones and neither of them is a good wind cut feature. But because of the Fusion Spatial Audio, I'm going to say the winner for audio is the GoPro Fusion. Now testing the video quality on the tripod is not enough. We have to look at how the cameras perform with movement. First, stabilization. To test stabilization, I use the RC Carnage test. I mounted the One X and the Fusion side by side on an RC truck and drove it around our backyard. Without stabilization, you can see that the video would look like an unstabilized mountain bike video which shows that this test is representative of real world conditions. Now in full stabilization mode, the One X and the Fusion both had excellent stabilization. Now in addition to full stabilization mode, both the One X and the GoPro Fusion have forward facing stabilization. This is a mode that's very useful for cars, vehicles, and even hyperlapses. On the Fusion, the anti-shake mode is not as smooth or stable. Another issue for stabilization is drifting. The One X has no noticeable drifting. The Fusion, on the other hand, will start to drift slowly after around 3 minutes. So the winner for stabilization is clearly the Insta360 One X because of better forward stabilization and better resistance to drifting. Now let's look at slow motion modes. Both the GoPro Fusion and the Insta360 One X have excellent slow motion modes. The Fusion can shoot at 3K 60fps, while the One K can shoot at 4K 50fps or 3K 100fps. In terms of detail, here's how I would rank them. First, the One X at 4K 50fps, then the Fusion at 3K 60fps, finally the One X at 3K 100fps. Now because the One X has more detail, and it's a higher frame rate mode, the winner for slow motion is the One X. So do you like these in-depth tests? Then let me and other reviewers know. But next, let's look at usability and features for video. So first, I tested One, the startup time two, and speed. Three. First, I tested the startup time and speed. Uh, looks like the One X beat the Fusion that time. The, like One, the X One X can start recording a little time. bit faster, around one second faster. And that may not sound much, but if time is of the essence, that can mean the difference between capturing the moment or missing it. In capturing the moment, both of them have a quick capture mode. So you can leave the camera off and when you press the shutter, 
both cameras will turn on automatically and start recording. So the Fusion has an additional quick capture mode for time lapses. You double press the shutter and it's going to start a time lapse. You can also use that for photos. So for startup speed, I'm going to call it a tie. Next, let's look at ease of controls. Both cameras have intuitive menus and clear LCD screens. So this one's also going to be a tie. Next, let's look at quick access commands. The Fusion is voice command and can recognize many commands. This is great for hands-free control, but also great for quickly switching to another mode without going through the menus. Now, the One X has no voice command, but it has shortcuts for switching modes simply by holding the shutter. This allows you to quickly switch to another mode discreetly, even in situations where you need to be silent, such as a theatrical performance. So I'm going to call this another tie. Next, let's look at remote control options. The Fusion has several remote control options. First, you can use your phone. You can also use the smart remote or you can use this remote voice command remote. GoPro start recording. And by the way, the smart remote and the remote are both waterproof. The One X on the other hand can use the phone or a special Bluetooth remote with GPS. So the winner for remote control options is the GoPro Fusion because it has more options. Next, let's look at exposure control for video. The One X is one of the very few 360 cameras that has full manual exposure in video mode. The Fusion can control exposure compensation and the auto ISO limit. So the winner for exposure control is the One X. Next, let's look at log mode. Both the One X and the Fusion have log mode. But on the Fusion, the LUT is built in with the desktop software. On the One X, the LUT can be applied using a video editor such as Premiere. Or it can also be applied automatically by the phone app. So I'm going to call this a tie. Next, let's look at features. The Insta360 One X has several video features. The 360 live stream, a non-360 live stream called Freecast, bullet time, drift shot and GPS overlay. So the winner for features is the One X. Now let's look at photo quality. First, detail. Now in the center, the Fusion and the One X have almost the same amount of detail. The Fusion has very slightly more detail, visible only on very close inspection. But for practical purposes, they have about the same amount of detail in the center. Now in the stitch line, the One X has clearly more detail. So the winner for detail is the One X because they both have similar detail in the center while the One X has more detail in the stitch line. Next, let's look at dynamic range. So for non-HDR JPEG photos, the Fusion has more highlight range than the One X has JPEG mode. Now both of them also have RAW mode. In RAW mode, the Fusion has slightly more highlight range than the One X. But the One X also has a true HDR mode that takes three shots up to four EV apart. And the One X's HDR photo mode has far greater dynamic range than the Fusion. So the winner for photo dynamic range is the Instant VC One X because of the HDR mode. Next, I compared the photo stitching for the Fusion and the One X. Both of them can stitch well up to around three feet. From two feet and one foot, the Fusion looks better. So the winner for photo stitching is Fusion. Next, let's look at low light performance for photos. The One X can shoot at up to 3200 ISO and it has plenty of detail even at 3200 ISO. And if you use RAW, it has very little chroma noise. Now the Fusion can shoot at up to ISO 800. It has yellow blotches even at ISO 100, but it has far less luminance noise. The yellow blotches are also easily removed via chroma noise reduction. So for low light photos, the winner is the Fusion for quality and the Insta 61 X for versatility. Next, let's look at photo usability and features. First, let's look at controls. The One X has a self timer that can work even without the phone and without the remote. The Fusion doesn't have a self-timer, but it has voice command. Both can switch quickly to other photo modes. The One X can switch to HDR or interval shooting by holding down the shutter, while the Fusion can switch to other modes via its voice command, such as GoPro, shoot the burst, or shoot the time-lapse. So the winner for controls is... It's a tie. 
Next, let's look at exposure controls. The One X has true manual mode and has ISO priority and shutter priority as well. It also has exposure compensation. The Fusion has exposure control and auto ISO limit. That's it. So the winner for exposure controls for photo is the One X. Next, let's talk about color for photos. I took a photo of a color chart in JPEG and in RAW. As with the video color test, I adjusted the white balance, the white point, and the black point. I didn't make any other adjustments. I then looked at the RGB values for the color chips. For JPEG, I found that the 1X had more accurate colors. But for RAW, the Fusion had more accurate colors. And as of October 2018, I also found that the 1X RAW was very undersaturated and the tint had to be maxed out at magenta to look normal. So the winner for colors for photo is 1X for JPEG and Fusion for RAW. Next, let's look at the RAW mode. Both the One X and the Fusion can shoot in RAW, but the One X uses the open standard DNG format and the stitching on the desktop is very easy. It's as easy as stitching JPEGs. Moreover, it can produce a stitched DNG file. The Fusion cannot stitch in RAW. Instead, you have to edit the unstitched RAW photos, convert them to JPEG, and then the software will stitch the JPEGs for you. So the winner for RAW mode is the One X. Next, let's look at long exposures. Both can take long exposures and the exposures look pretty clean. So the winner for long exposures is a tie. Next, let's look at special features for photos. Both of them can shoot a time lapse. In addition, the Fusion can shoot a burst mode of up to 30 FPS. It also has a night lapse mode. The One X on the other hand can do HDR and can do bracketing. It also has tiny planet animations called spin view. So for photo features, it's gonna be a tie. Next, let's look at special uses. First, endurance. In my testing, the Fusion was able to record in 5K for 58 minutes and 53 seconds on a full charge. As for the One X, at 5.7K, it recorded exactly 30 minutes. At 4K 30 FPS, it stopped at exactly an hour and a half. Both of them have replaceable batteries and both can charge while recording. The winner for endurance is the GoPro Fusion, but please note the drifting issue. Next, let's talk about Street View. As of October 2018, neither the One X nor the Fusion can connect directly to the Street View app. Now, Fusion does have built-in GPS, but the Street View app can't seem to read the metadata from the photos. The One X doesn't have built-in GPS, but if you take a photo while connected to your phone, then your photo can have GPS metadata. One X will also have a Bluetooth GPS accessory that will add GPS to photos as well as videos. So you'll be able to import videos into the Street View and Street View will be able to extract frame graphs and link them in a virtual tour. So the winner for Street View is the One X. Next is the underwater use. The Fusion is waterproof, but the photos and videos become blurry underwater. And it also has a very large blind spot because it doesn't take refraction into account. Now the One X has a dive case with smooth stitching. So the winner for underwater use is the InstaTC One X. Let's look at ruggedness. The One X is not waterproof, but it does have an optional protective housing that will protect it not just from water, but also from being scratched. The Fusion is waterproof even without a case, but it's vulnerable to getting scratched because it doesn't have a protective case. Now there are a couple of third-party cases available, but they're not that great and they introduce a lot of glare. So the winner for ruggedness is the One X. Next, let's look at drone use. Now both cameras have excellent stabilization when used with drones. I tested them with the Mavic Pro with Jean-Marie Canis mount and they both did really well. I also tested their endurance on drones by testing how long they'd last from 100% battery down to around 20%. The One X lasted 16 minutes 42 seconds while the Fusion lasted only around 12 minutes 27 seconds because it's much heavier. So the winner for drone use is the One X. Next, let's look at workflow and editing. The One X can connect to your phone wirelessly or via the, one of the included cables for lightning, micro USB or USB type C. The Fusion can, can only connect with your phone wirelessly. And when there are a lot of wireless signals, it can be hard to get a connection on the Fusion. So the winner for connectivity is the One X. Next, let's look at stitching time and convenience. The One X has one micro SD card, while the Fusion has two. On the Fusion, I was able to download files from both micro SD cards simultaneously. And the transfer speed was just the same 
as one micro SD card. They also tested the stitching speed. No other GoPro Fusion, a two minute video file took 12 minutes, 39 seconds, while the One X is 12 minutes, 30 seconds. So they're virtually identical. Next, let's look at batch exporting. Both of them can do batch exporting. The only footnote here is that the Fusion does take a little bit longer to generate thumbnails. But otherwise, I'm gonna call this a tie. Next, let's look at file format. The N60 One X saves its 5.7K files in H.264 format while the Fusion saves its 5K files in either Cineform or ProRes. Cineform and ProRes have much lower compression than H.264, but they also take up much greater space. H.264 also has wider compatibility than Cineform or ProRes. So the winner for file format is the Fusion for quality and the One X for convenience. Now in the future, the One X is gonna have a no-stitch editing workflow. For Premiere users, you're going to be able to edit the Insta 60 One X files without stitching them first. Not only is this faster, but this will also reduce the number of times the video is compressed. So the balance for file format may tip toward the One X in the future. Next, let's look at editing features. The Fusion can convert your 3 d video into an over-capture video. And in the iOS version, the virtual camera will be stabilized. The One X can do that too, and the virtual camera is stabilized in both the iOS and Android versions. Now, in addition, the One X has keyframing. It also has object tracking, hyperlapse with motion blur, time shift, which is basically speed ramping. You can also edit the video's appearance. And in the future, the One X's app will be able to combine multiple videos into one video. So the winner for editing features is the One X. Now so far we've been looking at image quality and usability. Now let's look at other factors. So first, let's talk about updates. The Fusion was receiving regular updates, but in September, GoPro laid off the developers for their 360 software. So it seems doubtful that the Fusion will receive any further update. Meanwhile, the Insta360 ONE X is receiving regular updates. In the last three weeks alone, it's already received around five updates that added several features such as DNG stitching and direction hold. So the winner for updates is the Insta360 ONE X. And finally, there's the cost. The Fusion was originally $699, but seems to be now permanently around $599. Meanwhile, the Insta60 One X is $399. So in terms of cost, the winner is the Insta60 One X. So now let's summarize. So for video quality, the winner is the GoPro Fusion. The center is a little more detailed. There's better dynamic range, has less compression artifacts. So if your top priority is video quality, then get the GoPro Fusion. Just be aware that it has an uncertain future. We don't know if there will be any further updates in the future. On the other hand, if you want a 360 camera that's almost as good as the Fusion for video quality and is equal to, if not better than the Fusion is almost everything else, then get the Insta360 One X. So for updates on the One X and the GoPro Fusion, check out these links. And if you want to get the best deal on them, check out these links below. So as you saw, the information in this video is so detailed that you're not gonna find it anywhere else. And that's actually what I try to do with all my videos, either from the in-depth information or from innovative techniques that no one else has thought of. So if, you're, if that's what you want, check out these videos and find out why 3 c Rumors is the resource that 3 c Shooters trust for in-depth camera reviews and innovative techniques. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in 360.